in my second preview of the morning, uh, we're going to take a look at the Colorado Avalanche and the Arizona Coyotes. These teams have met once in the playoffs, and that was a series Colorado 1-5. and five. And that was so long ago that you can't argue any sort of relevance. Basically, I'm, I'm wearing a Shane Doan Arizona jersey for two reasons. One, it's, it's actually Phoenix, and that's what they were called the last time these teams met. And two, because I'm, I'm kind of, I'm hoping the Coyotes go on some sort of run. And I've, I've watched Coyote fans go through a lot of uh, disappointments along the way. And I know if you're an Avs fan, you're like, wait, we haven't gone through disappointments. Oh, I think Colorado wins this series. I'm just, I'll, I'll be cheering on Colorado in this one. Now, when we look at the all-time scoring leaders, and again, uh, this is something I'm just doing for this round. Every round, I'll do something different. Uh, it's just it's just for fun. It doesn't really mean a whole lot. Uh, it's just something fun to look at. Uh, Sackick leads the Colorado Avalanche all-time in games played and points. Obviously, 172 games played, 188 points. Now, on the Arizona side, the reason this is interesting is Thomas Steen with 56 games played and Howard Chuck with 49 points are still the franchise leaders for the Arizona Coyotes, a history they share with the Winnipeg Jets. It's interesting because Shane Doan is a Doan jersey, uh, didn't play more than 56 games in the playoffs in his career, which is kind of sort of criminal. So it says a lot about how the Coyotes haven't really had a, a big playoff push of any sort. We will see whether Nashville played really badly or Arizona is this good. And I, I think it's probably a mixture of both. I think Nashville underachieved. They didn't come out a, a sharp enough, but at the same time, Coyotes, full value for the win. So scoring leaders on the Colorado side, Nazem Kadri, a goal and three assists, looked fantastic through the play-in, or through the round robin. I'm going to make that mistake a lot. Rantanen, four assists for the Colorado Avalanche. Donskoy, two goals and an assist. Everybody knows I like Donskoy. McKinnon, a goal and two assists. Burakovsky, a goal and two assists. And JT Confer with a goal and an assist for Colorado. So the scoring depth is fantastic. Their defense, of course, led by... This kid, Makar, who's pretty good. Uh, Grubauer in net, 1-0-1 with a 9.69 save percentage. I'm guessing he gets the lion's share of the start since he played two of the three games. Franco's had a shutout in his one appearance. He's a pretty good goaltender. <clears throat> I've, I've been saying it all year. Uh, power plays, Colorado, 25% during the round robin. Penalty kill, 80%. So their special teams numbers, not too shabby. And their shots for and against, pretty solid, again, for round robin. 37.7 shots for per game. Shots against, 28.3. So the numbers, pretty good for Colorado. Uh, scoreless, surprisingly to me anyways, because Nachushkin had a really good uh, season up until the pause. Nachushkin was scoreless this year. Uh, the guy who's going to make uh, probably a breakthrough, uh, probably Makar, who surprisingly only had the one point in the three games. He was very prominent, but he just had the one goal to show for it through three games. So I would expect that to change. October 12th, these teams met in Colorado. The Avalanche won that game 3-2 to two in overtime. The uh, Arizona Coyotes shut them out the last time they met, November 2nd. Kemper had 33 saves in that game. So Arizona can absolutely keep up with Colorado. This honestly should be a really fun, kind of fast series. The The Coyotes played a more entertaining game game against Nashville than I recall them playing for a lot of this season. And yet, Clayton Keller, their leading scorer, two goals and two assists. You get the feeling there's still more there. But Keller definitely showed up and played very well. Not on the board is Connor Garland. I thought Garland had a good play-in round as well against Nashville. Uh, Kessel, a goal and three assists. Hall, a goal and three assists. Taylor Hall, good for Arizona. Didn't hurt him. And had some really nice plays. And again, it, it sort of underscores what I've been saying about Hall, which is that he's a good part of a top six. He's not necessarily the one that wins you everything, but he can be a good part of a top six. Uh, Ekman Larson, a goal and three assists. Christian Dvorak, two goals and an assist. And Stepan had three helpers, and I thought Derek Stepan was playing as well as he did five years ago. I thought Stepan looked really good against Nashville. Darcy Kemper, three and one with a 933 save percentage. I'll mention here... Colorado needs to do what Nashville didn't do. Kemper, good save percentage, played really well in game four, kicking out way too many rebounds. Way too many rebounds that Nashville just wasn't getting to. If Colorado was able to get to those rebounds, 
this this could be over quickly. And I expect most of the predictions to be Colorado. And I still think Colorado probably goes to the Stanley Cup final because that's that's who I've been picking all year. And yet I will be cheering for Arizona. That's why I'm wearing Arizona. I'll definitely be cheering for them because it's been eight years since they went on any sort of a run. Power play. Uh, Arizona 16.7%. Their penalty kill only 71.4%, which is surprising since Nashville, not known as having a great power play, and yet Arizona had their struggles keeping it off the board. So if Colorado can take that 25% power play, put it up against that penalty kill that wasn't that great, and if they can avoid the five-on-five goals, Colorado could absolutely win this series in four or five games. Again, I'm, I'm just wearing who I'm cheering for. It's obvious from the way the play-ins went that predictions are just not going to be accurate shots for 31.3 per game for arizona shots against 40.8 uh i i think it stands to reason that they can't allow that many shots against colorado uh colorado shooters a little more accurate than nashville's so if they're allowing 40 shots a game against colorado this this series again could be a short one Scoreless for Arizona, Jacob Chikrin didn't have a point in that round. Although, again, very good play by him. Uh, breakthrough, I went with Lawson Kraus, who only had the one goal. Kraus had a pretty good season going for him. And, you know, at the time of the pause, he's one of those players that could have been hurt by it, that we could have seen him come back and say, well, he had that great year. But, you know, this, this, this play in round, he just hasn't been that great. No, he was pretty good pretty solid just the one goal to show for it I, I think there's more there that could show up against Colorado it's really going to be a matter of whether or not Colorado can get to Kemper and keep getting to Kemper which Nashville wasn't able to do Nashville kept to the perimeter quite a bit and not like I said not able to get to those rebounds offense I'm giving the edge to Colorado defense I'm giving the edge to Colorado I, I understand Arizona's defense was very very good against Nashville but again, the overall depth of defense, I am giving a slight edge to Colorado, though that's close. Goaltending, I'm giving a slight edge to Darcy Kemper. Because again, while Grubauer and Francois had great numbers, they're better than Kemper's. I think Kemper was excellent in the play-in round. And the no pressure, Arizona still doesn't have any pressure. So here's the thing. If, if you're the Coyotes and you lose this series, that's fine. You can still... Tell your, your season ticket holders and, and potential season ticket holders to come, hey, we're making progress. We finally showed that we're, we're going to do something for the first time in eight years. Support us now. Here we go. And and it is an important story. Just keep in mind that when people say, well, you know, Arizona had to beat Nashville because the NHL had to, you know, help out Arizona. Uh, that's, that's just not accurate because Arizona has been out of the playoffs for eight years. So it is It is nice to see Arizona in there. It would be nice to see some sort of a run. Again, this doesn't mean I'm predicting Arizona's going to win because that's how people are going to look at these videos. They're going to load up and go, Shannon's predicting Arizona's going to win. No, I'm not predicting squat. I'm saying what could, might, pay, maybe. I'm not I'm not even doing a bracket this year. I am just, I am out. This, this series and every other series going on, I just expect some really, really good hockey. I do expect things to get kind of physical between these guys early. And it'll be interesting to see how Kadri does through a whole round. It is it is kind of fun to see him at the top of the scoring list for Colorado. I understand why Toronto moved him. I didn't agree with it, though. And I, I still, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it. Although, Kerfoot has played very well for Toronto so far through four games against Columbus. I can't argue against Kerfoot. I just think that Kadri adds that certain something. And I understand that certain something's got him suspended a couple of times and at pretty important times. But as long as you can keep him from losing his cool, I, I think Nazem Kadri's an excellent forward. And I think he showed that through the round robin. We do have to consider, again, the round robin impact. Colorado hasn't played a game that's been really stressful for them since March. Arizona's been under a lot of stress through their four games, they've performed very well. And the level that they're performing at is is really, really, really solid. I, I honestly, again, I just expect a really good series. I figure that in the comment section, there's probably going to be a lot of, well, the abs are going to obliterate them. I don't see it that way. 
But if you do, let me know why you do in the comment section below. Let me know who you think uh, could win this series and, and ver very well should and might and maybe and will. I expect a lot of Colorado votes. I'll, I'll put something up on the channel as well uh, regarding, you know, who people think it, or could win these, these, these rounds. Uh, round one, it feels weird because I want to say round two. And then, like, I want to use the term play in again because I got so used to saying play in. It's 2020. Everything's weird. And, and of course, on fire because 2020. All right, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And as I said, predicting winners and all that, which I, I would love to do, but I just can't. Because, again, uh, it, the, we saw in in the play-ins, it's just good luck. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through it and you just happen upon this video. And, hey, thanks for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.